Hey guys, this is Marie. Welcome back. This week we are needle felting bunny ball. This cute little tutorial has been on our blog for a few years. Him and his buddy Cheap. Uh, Cheap is the little chickie with the bunny hat. These are both free tutorials you can download, but this week we're going to needle felt bunny ball. And it will be a great primer for needle felting storybook bunny, which we'll do next week. So it just takes a few supplies and we're going to get started. Hi, I'm Anne. Hi, I'm Holly. Hi, I'm Marie. And we are coming to you live on the first day of spring because it's Happy Wally Wednesday! Hey everyone, we hope you are having a gorgeous day wherever you are, no matter which side of the equator. We're having a gorgeous spring day, huh? It is so beautiful outside. <laughs> <laughs> the birds outside of my house were chirping so loud this morning. It's like oh, they knew. Wow. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> <laughs> we are having an awesome spring so far, and we hope you are too. And today we are, well, we're kind of preparing for next week's workshop with Danny, huh? We are. So Danny Ice is going to be here next week for a needle felting workshop. We know a great group of our friends are coming. There's like 13 or more people coming to take this workshop, so we're super excited. And then Saturday after that, we're going to do her book launch and open house. So if you're in the Austin area, come on down. But today we're going to needle felt money ball. What have you guys been working on? Just packing orders and trying to get, <laughs> get all your company supplies out to you as quick as possible. Yeah, we can't wait to see what you create with it. We hope you'll share a photo with us. <laughs> well, how about you, Holly? More packing orders and trying to catch up. It's been a really busy day, and we just love that we get to take a quick pause and say hi to you guys. So we're going to do a little free tutorial today, a little change of plans, but thank you for joining us, and we're going to jump right in. Thanks, Gals. Thanks. Happy Wednesday, everyone, and thank you for joining us. If this is your first time joining us live, say hi and where you're from. And if you're watching the playback on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button. If you're watching us live right now on Facebook, you can hit the little bell up in the corner of the chat window, and it's going to let you know anytime we go live. So today, we had planned to needle felt Storybook Bunny, and I can't explain what happened. He got on the wrong bus this morning, and so his his buddy Dot has decided to step in and let me show you what we're going to make today. It's going to be a great primer for next week's tutorial because we will do Storybook Bunny next week. So today we're going to make Dot, which is this cute little bunny ball. He's been a tutorial on our blog for a couple of years and him and his buddy Cheap have been pinned a ton of times and we've actually never shared them live. So we're going to make Dot today, and the reason that's good is, one, you can practice making a really firm shape. Two, you can work on really smoothing that surface in a small scale. Three, we'll make some ears, and we'll make different ears next week, and we will use glass beads for his eyes. So these will all be great primers, and it will help build the skills for doing Storybook Bunny next week. So that's what we've decided to do. What do you say, Anne? All right. We have a lot, lot of felting friends joining us. We've got just Justine in Wisconsin, Sandra in New York, uh, Joan right up the road in Dallas. Oh, very nice, very nice. Thank you all for being here. I see Claire, I see Karen, I see Maria, I see Laureen, there's Judy, Sammy. Hey, gals, thank you so much for joining us. And I do apologize for the little change in plan, but hopefully you'll like to make uh, Bunny Ball, his name is Dot, and um, for those who are just beginning, it's going to be a great, great place to start. So just in a second, I'll turn down and um, we'll look at those supplies. We do want to show you a couple of new things today. Um, Anne is going to show you some spring colors in our MC1 line for you to think about, uh, think about working with for your spring themes. And I had a kit around here from her. So for y'all who are interested in a kit for doing Storybook Bunny, now there's still time to order. We have them all ready to go. This is Storybook Bunny. We will needle felt him together next week. He just all comes in one color, but you're going to get everything you need to make him in one little supply pack. If you already have needles and foam, you won't need anything else. I will work with coarse needles, medium needles, and fine needles. But if you don't have those, you can upgrade or just add on to the kit. So these are ready to go for Storybook Bunny. Yes. 
And then the one other thing I want to tell you is, for those of you who already order with us, I know you'll be excited. And we're giving big shout outs and props to Fairy Jordan today because Jordan, who is on our staff in production and customer service, has revamped what we call our order sheet, our reorder sheet that we send out in every order. And I know some of you have been getting the same one for a lot of years. <laughs> and Jordan has put her mad skills together to create us a brand new one. And it represents a lot of the fibers that we carry in a lot of the colors. And man, I just want to say it looks awesome. So I'm giving big hearts right now to Jordan. We're all just so stoked. She's been working on this on her mad home computer and just did a kick uh a job. <laughs> Yay, Jordan! <laughs> oh, Thank you so much for joining us today. I've got some lovely colors from our MC1 batting line. The MC1 batting is a medium fine fiber, about 25 microns. We have about 90 colors, over 90 colors in the MC1, so a lot of a lot of fun stuff to choose from. Today we're just going to look at some happy spring colors. I'm going to start right up here. This is Buttercup, Lemon Peel, Honeysuckle, Mango, Orange Cream, Coral Reef, Robin's Egg, Winter Blue, Sorbet, Sugar Plum. This one right here is Parakeet and lemongrass. <laughs> Angelina Fleury says, I love them all. And Marie Claire says, beautiful colors. Um, Jamlin says, hey, Anne, got here just in time. Oh, Joanne hey. says, looks like spring. Alicia says, I'm really feeling this, these colors, cheerful colors. Very good. Yeah. Thank you, Anne. Absolutely. Sometimes, it, sometimes it's just fun to see all those colors together, and they all go really well together, even though, you know, they're not all in the same color family. This is an example of a little 2D picture that I did last year where, you know, recently we wet felted the background for our little cluster houses and then we needle felted a picture on top and this is one that I did last year just sort of freehand. And here's all those colors together. It's like robin's egg and the... Uh, uh, this, actually, this one's actually boysenberry, so it's a little bit darker, but the orange cream and a nice yellowy green. So play with putting those together, even if you think that, you know, they're all from different color families. They can really, you know, come together in a nice, fun way. Okay, cool. So we're going to needle felt uh, dot bunny ball is a great little project. And I hope you have fun with it, and I look forward to seeing the one that you make, too. So we're just going to turn down here, and I'm going to look for your questions as well, and I hope you have fun. The supplies for today, I am working with our CW1 Core Wool. I'm going to work with our CW1 core wool, and in this case, I'm working with the roving. The roving comes in a great big bag so that you can just reel it out in a long length, and that's what I'm working with today. We are working with our MC1 batting, and for dot today, here he is, I chose oatmeal so that the color will stand out just a little bit from the core wool. I know it's a little bit more difficult to see the color on camera. And then for his sorbet, in the, or for his ears and in the inside of his nose, I'm going to use sorbet. Look, use any pink or peachy or, you know, color you want, but we're just going to keep it really simple. Those are the two colors I'm going to use. And then I'm going to be using black beads for the eyes. These are little four millimeter uh, black beads. We sell these in the shop. They come on a string of 100, and they're glass, so they're check glass beads, so they have a nice little shine to them. Those are fun. Alternately, we have what we call a little glass eye detail pack, and we sell this as a little pack. You might choose this instead. It comes with a little bobbin with wax floss on it for jointing and a button thread on it for sewing the eyes in. We give you a little of our MC1 in black and white. 
And then we also give you two sets of two sets of glass eyes that are on a loop so that you can sew them in and a long doll needle to work with. So if you've been looking at that, that's what this is. They are glass eyes, but they're on a loop instead of on a pin or on uh, instead of beads like this little guy here. Now, y'all just feel free to ask questions and interrupt me, and Anne is going to feed us questions so that we do our best to answer everyone's questions today. The needles I'm working with, just to, let's give those a quick rundown because they always come up. I want to encourage you to try and play with the coarse needles, uh, blue and pink. The blue is our 32 and the pink is our 36. Play with those so you see how nice they are for forming a really firm sculpture. Medium needles are our 38 star and our 38 spiral, and if you twist the spiral in your hand, you'll be able to see the spirals. And then I'm going to be working with fine needles also. These are 42 triangles. I have a group clustered together. I'll use some single, and then I'll play with these tools also so you can see how they work, the pen tool and the clover punch tool. You don't have to have these, they're just an option. And then a long sewing needle for sewing in the beads of the eyes. So that's a rundown on our tools and supplies. I'm working on our, uh, this is our 16 by 24 or 18? 18 by 24 foam pad is what I'm working on. Uh, people always ask us about this. It's a real fun size to work with. It sits in your lap nicely, uh, just a real nice work surface. So this is our Earth Harmony foam and all this stuff is available on our site. And Lisa asks, are those coarse needles, uh, were they stars or triangles? Those are triangles. The coarse needles are triangles and um, it works just fine. They, they work great and they'll really chomp your stuff down pretty good. Now I don't know how much bunny ball weighs, but here's what I'm going to do is start out with a length that's about this long. And this is just what the core wool looks like in the roving format. And it makes it really easy to just reel out of the bag. The first thing we want to do is make a ball. And when I show people when they're just getting started how to start something, the most important thing is that you compress the fiber really well. Let me get all these guys out of the way. Compress the fiber really well so that you have minimum air in your project and really squish all that air out so you can get it nice and compact. And I'm going to start with these two needles right here, the coarse needles. Let me just move everybody out of the way. Okay. So the first thing we do is we kind of just roll a little cylinder and press. Really, your foam should be firm or it's helpful if it is. So it gives you like resistance. So roll it on the foam and then tuck in the end, tuck in the other end and roll. Tuck in the end, tuck in the end and roll. And notice how you hold all of the air out of the ball while you roll so that it stays really firm. Before you go too far, if you feel like you're going to lose control of it, then go ahead and use your needle right then and needle felt it down. Notice that the action of the coarse needles is different than the action of the finer needles. The coarse needles, you want to really drive them in, not bounce off the surface. You want to drive them in and compress that wool together. The firmer your shapes are, the easier it will be to get a smooth surface. Now this is probably about as big as I want my bunny ball to be, so I'm going to hold it tight and hold all that tension in there and then just tear off this balance. You would make an Easter egg the same way, you would just shape it more like an egg. So notice that I'm not letting it go. If you get a bunch of air in there, it's going to take more effort to make a really firm ball. So hold the pressure in, hold it really tight, and now just tack everything down the best you can. How are we doing, Ann? Doing good. Hey, if you're new, say new. Uh, maybe say hashtag new. So you're here for the first time, you're joining us for the first time. Wooly Wednesday is different every time, but we've been doing a lot more tutorials in the last six months, I would say. And it makes us keep them kind of simple because we have to get it done in an hour or in a couple of sessions. 
but they're all great skills builders or just fun little projects to work with. A couple of our quilting friends want to know if we have a tutorial for the duck. Uh-huh, cheap. Yeah, there's a tutorial for cheap, and what we'll do is once the show is over, then we'll link to them because they're old tutorials uh, from our blog. And so we will dig those links up and we'll post them at the end of the show so you can have a printout for both dot and cheap. They are so fun to make. They really are. Okay, so notice that I've never let go of my ball. I've held on to it the entire time. And that is to keep as much air out as possible. Now I know some of you are cringing because some people hate the sound of the crunch and some people love it. <laughs> so I guess you're just gonna have to decide where you are with that. Cindy asks, when you're starting a ball, can you use a needle cluster to make it faster? You could, and you know, play with, I didn't have a, I should have loaded a pen tool, I should have loaded a pen tool with some coarser needles. Sometimes I like to use coarser needles. You can also hold uh, two needles in your hand, and hey look, you can even use these little uh, fine needles. They actually work really great in a cluster for building a shape like this. So you definitely can, and I just didn't load one of my tools in advance. Now, what you'll notice, if you put some really coarse needles in a big cluster, is you get a lot of surface tension and surface resistance, and that may cause your needles to bend or bow. So the more needles you have together, they need to be either spaced a little further apart or have fewer of them. So just keep that in mind because if you have too many together, they tend to pull the surface taut as they're all trying to drive so much wool into the center. Okay, now I want to encourage that when you're making your own balls that you don't rush the process. The one thing that will really um, demonstrate if you just make a ball is how much effort and time it takes to make a really firm, dense inner core for your project. So don't rush that part. Instead, teach yourself, you know, how much time it takes to get the shapes as firm as you want them. Now some people still want some squish, but because next week we're going to be doing string jointing of the head, I really want you to learn what it's like to make a very firm shape. So this week, if you're new, uh, this would be a great time to practice making a really firm shape. Now this one we want to be mostly round. And my ball is kind of getting there, but honestly I could spend 15 minutes just getting him squished down and firm. And multiple needles. Let me, I'm going to grab another needle here. How are we doing, Anne? Any questions? Uh, a couple of our felting friends want to know how firm you're felting the ball. I'm going to firm it. I want to felt it as firm as I, I kind of have time for so that we can build the rest. So now I have two needles and I'm going to do this and then I'm going to cover it uh, once we get that round shape and I'll kind of flatten the bottom. So I want it to be pretty firm. Now um, some of you know how we measure our firmness and you can feel it by doing a little test here. This would be considered, uh, my husband taught me this years ago, so some of y'all heard me say this many times, but it's how a meat cutter or um, someone preparing meat would talk about a meat's readiness or doneness. So this would be, if you put your finger and your thumb together, this, and you push right here, this would be what rare feels like. This would be like medium, if you put your finger and middle finger and thumb together. This is what medium feels like. This is well done and this is very well done. So ideally you want your structure, your shape to be somewhere between well done and very well done. That would be a good measure of firmness. And for our folks that just joined, what needles are you using? Right now I'm using 36 triangles, two 36 triangles. I'm holding two of them in my hand. You can put two of them in a tool if you want. Uh, you can use just one. 
And notice that you want to work your way all the way around the ball and just go to the center, to the center. You don't want to drive past the center and you don't want to go short of, you know, using what is the shaft on this particular needle. You want to kind of use the whole thing. Now, if you feel like your ball could just use a little rounding out to make it a little more round, this tool is so awesome. It's the Clover 8900. Um, it is so awesome for rounding out your shape. And I just locked it. There we go. And you'll just bang it all around, like move the ball all around and let this tool crunch it down. It comes with fine needles in it, but you'll notice that it does a good job of kind of evening out your surface. Laura asks, could you use a 38 gauge needle for this? For making the ball? Yes, you can absolutely use a 38, but when you're trying to make the center very firm, you'll find that coarser needles make the job a little bit easier. So we're going to move up to our 38s, but if when you're trying to make the center firm, the coarser needles are going to get you there faster. If you're going to use a 38, then I would say build up in layers. So make a little ball, needle felt that really tight, add on to it, needle felt that really tight. And Kate asks, are we aiming for a flat bottom? We're going to make it a flat bottom, and I'm going to do that here in just one second. So let's get the exterior color on the outside. And I'm using oatmeal, which may not seem much darker, but I wanted just a soft little, a soft, cute little bunny color, very gentle. When you cover a piece, you want to cover it so that the under color doesn't show through and you really don't want much more than that. So this is a very thin layer of our MC1 batting of this, this right here of the oatmeal. This would be like a half the normal thickness. It's very, very thin. So I'm just going to piece it, meaning I'm going to see how much fiber do I need to cover my ball. Just about that much. I'll go just a little overlap and then I'm going to pull off the excess. So I'm going to keep it very light and wispy. Now when you cover your piece, you don't want so much bulk that you get a bunch of folds. And see how this is all loose and wispy? That's perfect because we're just going to fold it all the way around. Now there's a lot on the top and bottom, but these layers are very thin so that's going to be easy to work with. And I'm just going to start loosely tacking it down all around the circumference first and then we'll do the top and bottom. I'm using my little cluster of 42 triangles. You could also use this tool if you want and tack it down. This is just one of my favorites. You could use a single needle if you want as well. The first thing we're doing is just tacking it down. Now, the ends are loose. I don't want more on there than I need. So we just did something else like this the other day, Anne. What did we needle felt? Where we just pulled off the... I'm just going to pull off a little bit of that top and bottom right there so I just have enough to cover it. I don't want too much excess. I don't want to create big folds. And I can just tack it down just like this. So we're going to zoom in the YouTube camera here for a second, the um, recording camera, so you can see. And I think the live camera is probably pretty good. All right, see how it's all loose and fluffy here, but there's enough excess. So what we're going to do, we just sort of, I just sort of scoop it over. And because this is loose and wispy and there's no real hard edges, it doesn't create any big folds. So the first thing I want to do is just needle felt this all down. And I find it a little bit easier before I flat end the one side, just because it's still a nice round shape and easy to work with. It doesn't really matter. I just find that kind of an easy way to go about it. And then you can decide which is the prettiest side, which side do you want to be his face, and which side will be the bottom. And a couple of our felting friends want to know if they could wet felt a ball and then add the ears on after. You certainly could. In this case, we just want to blend them in really well so that they don't look attached. And so you could wet felt a ball. You might just look at, you know, how well can you fluff out the fiber and attach it on. Okay, so there's our little ball, and he definitely could use some time, you know, just to smooth everything out. 
But for flattening the bottom, I like to just decide how is he going to sit, you know, how do I want his face to be, and I think that looks like that might be a good little uh, face, face for him right there. So now I'm going to flatten out this bottom. And to flatten out the bottom, you could use a tool or you could use the coarser needles and just go right straight in. Don't worry about your needle marks on this phase because you could always patch right back over it. And that's all we want to do is just needle felt straight in the bottom there and get it nice and flat. And he doesn't need too much bottom either. We want him to have enough, enough of his little face sticking up. Another one of our felting friends asked, could they make the ball around the pipe cleaner to attach to a body later? Sure. Yeah, if you, if you know how to do that, you can do whatever you want. You can attach it to a face. You can attach it to a body. So for those of you who don't know, they're asking about, that's kind of a, like a technique that we use in our needle felting adult tutorial where we show how to make a head on a wire. And so, yeah, you certainly could. You certainly, certainly could. Okay, so I'm just needle felting out what, what's kind of, kind of be the face. Now, when I make his little face, I want to give him little indentations for his eyes. So that's one, another thing that these coarse needles are really good for, is creating nice little indents. So I think his eyes will probably go just, I'm going to just say they're going to go right about here. If you want to make him like a little bit of a, a baby, you know, you can space his eyes a little further apart. Maybe we'll do that. We'll just stick his eyes a little further apart and he'll just have a little more of an innocent look. So you just want to drive deep holes in there. It's easier to kind of get deep holes and have the rest firm if you kind of firm it up and don't needle felt it 100%. If you needle felt something 100% and then you try and drive these deep holes in there, it's a little more challenging. So I've given him kind of widespread eyes. Let's go ahead and make his ears and then we'll look at finishing up his face. I'm going to set him right here. Okay, so to make his ears, you can make his ears as long as you want. You want to make them, when you pull off your fiber, you want to make them wider than the result, the end ears, and you also want to make them um, longer so that you have a little room to attach. So, and you also have a little room to build. So, I'm going to just pull off, in this case, gosh, that's about as long as my, about as long as my middle finger, maybe a little bit more of a trail. I'm going to split this in half and then we'll see how this looks. Whenever you're making two of something, make them at the same time so that you kind of get the same size. And for this, all I'm going to do is just fold the edge over, fold an edge in, and fold the top down even. Now, you could also fold it in half if you have enough. You know, if you have enough length, you can fold it all the way in half. But so here we go, I'm just going to fold an edge in, fold an edge in, and then fold the top down. And we just want to kind of get the basic shape that we want, and then we're going to needle felt that into place. First I tack straight down into it. We just want to build up a little bit of density, and then we're going to go into the sides so that we build up that density too. Here, here my needle. Notice that it's not doing this. I'm not like trying to drive it into the foam. You could use your uh, third, this is a 38 uh, star. You could use a 38 star if you want and move that fiber a little bit faster. But when you go into the sides, I'm going to peel it up for a minute. When you go into the sides, you just want to go straight in and build up that density. I didn't bring my, I think I have my cardboard. I saved it. We've shown this little tip a couple of times. If you have some little cardboard when you're trying to go into the sides of something, put your little piece in between two pieces of cardboard and then you can just needle felt straight down there and not poke your fingers. You think he asked, do you want the ears real thick? I don't really want them so thick. I just want them to kind of stand up. Stand up or be shapeable. Stand up or be shapeable. It's up to you, you know, make your bunny however you want. 
you can play with this. You can't get you can't get dot wrong. <laughs> you, know? you can't get dot wrong. These are just projects to play with. They're fun little skills builders. They're great little gifts. They're you know fun little decorations. For me, it's like meditation. It's just a good time. I don't really take it too seriously, quite honestly. <laughs> I don't. I don't take it too seriously. For me, felting is pretty much fun. And so now I'm going to go into the top. So this is turning into an ear pretty fast. And before I move too, too far, I'm going to show you. So on our bunny, we want to attach the ear to the top of our bunny. But, um, let's see if I come back, I'm too close on this camera. Uh, attach the ear to the top of our bunny. But it's nice if we flay out the bottom. So what we'll do is we'll take off a little the little pinch right there and we can split this for attaching so don't move too fast and don't needle felt down too far that way you can split the fiber at the bottom and we can kind of attach that ear like this now my ears not done so I need to needle felt a little more um, and firm this ear up and give it some color Now, what you don't, what I discourage you from doing is using a tool like this and punching all the way through this ear because it's just going to get fuzzy on the other side and you're going to flatten it beyond where it needs to be flattened. It would be better to just try and barely connect with that foam at all so you can really firm this up without making it too fuzzy on the other side. And Kate asks, could you use a reverse needle to help firm it up or would it only pull the core wool up through? Yeah, a, a, a reverse needle does not help firm. A reverse needle pulls wool out. So a reverse needle is not going to help you firm up your piece. Now if your ears feel too thin uh, by using this method, then by all means go ahead and just double it over all the way, just depending on how thick you want your ears to be. I'm going to try and get my second ear. And Jennifer asks if you could use a, a template for the ear. Oh yeah, you can, you can, I didn't plan my ball size, but uh, you can absolutely use a template and cut them out in advance. And next week we're, we're going to look at another way to do the ears, which is a little less thick and a little more um, shapeable. So this I'm just freestyling, which is often my way, but if you know the size of your ears, cut them out of paper first and make a template, and you'll see that on Cheap, I know we use a template to do as wings, and we show you exactly how we like to do that. Oh, we have so many folks posting right now that they love these bunnies and that they're going to make them with their kids and grandkids. Oh, that's oh. so sweet. I hope you will share pictures. You know, especially when the little ones felt, it's just so fun, and... They're always such free spirits. Honestly, they worry much less about it than us adults do. Mm -hmm. As adults, we kind of get, we get all caught up in getting it right or wrong. And kids are like, just let us go. <laughs> We're ready. Okay, so I'm going to use my template again real quick. And um, then we're going to make our two ears match. My cardboard's a little bit bigger than I need. We're going to make our two ears match. And then we're going to put the pink in the middle. This would be real cute in a little Easter basket, too. Aww. <laughs> what? Oh, no, just Easter basket. <laughs> okay, so here we have our two ears. We want them to kind of match, so make your, your wool kind of match in the first place, and then you can stack them on top of each other. Now, mine look really rough at the moment, and I will kind of nerd out on making them really polished and really even. And the way to do that is just to take your time, take your time, get in close, look at it up really close, and go after anything that looks out of place. Spend the time to refine it. And what that's going to do, it's going to make it more durable over the years. This little bunny was made, I think, in 2013, I want to say. Now I'm bleeding on him. <laughs> Do you need a band -aid? No. <laughs> oh, so funny. I wasn't looking. Um, he was made in 2013. He's been in and out of bags and boxes every year since then, on display, picked up and handled. And he might be a little wispy, but he's not coming apart. And that's why we encourage you to needle felt something all the way. 
and make it firm and make it hold up to the pawing that your friends and family are going to give it. And um, you can add the fuzziness if you want with another layer, but you know, make it durable so that it holds up over time. If you're working with our MC1 batting, you will see that with attention and intention, you can make it really smooth. But you've got to have enough wool to make that happen. Like with the ears, it would be easy to use too little wool and not be able to firm them up all the way. Okay, so now we're going to add a little color. This right here is just a little tiny piece of vegetable matter, for those who don't know. We also call it VM. I only ever worry about it in the surface layers. Our MC1 batting is non-carbonized and it's not treated with any harsh chemicals that burn out vegetable matter. So when you see it, only worry about it in the surface layers and you can just pick it out. You can even keep a little uh, like set of tweezers with you if you're working on stuff that's really small and you want to get it all out of there. Okay, so I'm going to just put a little tiny pink in my bunny's ears. They don't quite match, which is kind of okay. And we're just going to drop it like he barely has any pink on there at all. I want to kind of keep it from going through to the other side. So that's why the, the fine needles really help. And I'm just going to pluck a little bit of pink right on there. How are we doing, Anne? We're doing good, and I earlier misread a question, okay. so Kate, I'm sorry about that. Uh, Kate asked, could you use the reverse needles to make the bunny fluffy, or would uh, it just, just... Yeah, it would potentially pull the core wool through the other side, you know, so um, in that case, you could, you could do it, but you might think about what that underneath color is and you still want to make your piece fairly well felted before you use that reverse needle. Now notice I'm using the 42 and I'm just lightly, lightly tacking it down. If the color you use you feel like is too strong, if you're working with the MC1 batting, you could always take a tiny, tiny pinch, a tiny tuft, and just put it right over the top and just blend it out. So you can piece this stuff really well and blend some fun colors. I'm going to just put a little more on there. And just make it a little bit stronger. And then we're going to attach his ears and get his little face on too. Now, okay. If you get a little dot of color, either pull it out or flick it with your needle so that you don't have, you know, strong lines. That's why we lay out this little tiny wisp and just piece it on there. And if you use your fine needle and just kind of tack around versus drive it down with a really coarse needle, then you don't get those strong colored dots. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to turn Benny towards me just for a second and look at how I want, how I want to position his ears. And so here's what I'm going to do is open the bottom like I showed you, and we're going to kind of piece them on his head. Now, if you don't know where you want them, you can just give them a tack or two, and you can always use uh, little straight pins, like little sewing pins if you need to, and decide where you want his ears to go. In this case, I'm going to just make them a little bit wide and maybe a little bit floppy. And notice that I've opened this wool up down here and we're going to tack it straight down. So the first thing I'm going to do is tack this wool just straight down onto the head. And I haven't put the ears on yet, so if I want to patch, I mean the eyes on yet, so if I want to patch over anything, I can do that because I haven't finished his little face. And notice I'm just kind of going straight down and you can vary the angles as well. Now when it comes to the ear part where it's actually joining the head, go ahead and go straight down into it. Straight down into the ear, front and back. Go straight down into that length there and connect it down. You could use a coarser needle, but using a fine needle helps you prevent you from getting too many needle marks into the, the surface and then you can kind of shape them a little bit. I want this to look kind of like, I don't know, like kind of like a little raggedy bunny, this one, as opposed to this guy dot. And I'm going to shape his little ears out. Maybe even... 
Robbie shares, I use push pins or straight pins to mark where I want the eyes, otherwise I always get them crooked. Yep, that's what we use too. In fact, I don't know, on one tutorial we show if you, you know, if all you have are white ones, you can paint them black with a Sharpie. So it's a great tip and that's the same tip that I've used too, is just use little push pins. If you don't have black ones, paint them black with a Sharpie. Okay. I would spend time with this Benny smoothing out all the rough edges just because I like things to look a little more polished. So I think it's worth the time to do. And by that, I mean go around on the surface, get really close and intimate, and tack all the little wispies down. All the little wispies just go right after them and get all the colors like just how you want them, like where the, the fiber blends and such. How are we doing on time, Anne? Doing, doing good. okay? Okay. So I am going to put just a little patch of color. It almost seems like he could use a little white, almost like a little white on his face. Do you, have any, you know? Do you know maybe we could use, uh, we could just even use the core wool, maybe. I don't know, I'm thinking about maybe I might trim out his face. I don't know, I don't know if we have the time, but maybe I'll do that at home. So notice that I put just a little patch over the top. And people always ask us about getting out the needle marks. So what I want to encourage you to do, I'm going to see if we can zoom in here just for a moment um, so that I don't, I don't skip this part. And we'll work on our little, look on our little pieces a little bit. Okay, we close, we up close? Okay, so when you look at needle marks, I want to encourage you to look at what's in between the needle marks. What's in between the needle marks is fiber that's higher than that needle indention. So go after the parts that are higher than the needle indention and just tack it down. Now you could use a single needle like this or you could use the little cluster tool. If the fiber underneath is not super dense and compressed, it's going to feel like this is leaving a bunch of needle marks. So get it all firm and tack down with your cluster tool. And then when you're feeling particularly mellow and calm and comfortable, you can take your little single needle and just tack, 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 everywhere you don't see a needle mark. You can go straight after it. You can angle you know vary the angle and go really shallow you can even go this shallow like as like almost at a 15 degree angle to the fiber rotate your piece around and go at it at various different angles when you see pieces that look really smooth and really polished one they're often working with a very short fiber in this case we're using our mc1 batting it's a medium fineness so that means that makes it kind of easy to needle felt as opposed to something very fine like the merino short fiber bats we carry those are 100 percent merino they're very slick and a little more difficult to wrangle the mc1 batting is really great for needle felting and i promise that if you have the patience and the attention you can just Lightly tack, 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 tack your way to a really beautiful, smooth finish. It does help if the underneath side is fairly firm and compressed because then you're compressing down to that layer. Okay, we're going to come out just a little bit and put in our eyes. And a couple of our felting friends want to know if we will be adding whiskers to our, our Oh, ball. you know what? If we have time... Uh, I don't know if we have any in the drawers here or just in the glass box. This is how the glass beads come. Anne's going to grab me some whiskers, so we'll try and do that. Okay, so this is how the glass beads come right here on a big long string. So be prepared before you, before you cut the strand to have a bucket or a vessel ready. Because <laughs> they're going to go everywhere. I have huge scissors right now. Okay. So dump them all in a vessel. You only need a couple, but they always roll away from me. And I had thread here somewhere. Okay. So right now I'm going to use this, uh, this black thread that we have here in our little pack. Button thread works great. Um, you just need enough length 
we're going to use, this is actually very thin thread, but it will work fine. And that's probably more than I need, but let's get it all off here. And Anne stepped out for a second, so I can't see your questions, but when she comes back, we'll get them answered. Okay, so I'm going to use a long needle. Get all my other stuff out of the way for you. I'm going to use a long needle, and we're going to inset the eyes right here. So the first thing I do is thread the needle with just the thread. My needles are too big to thread onto the beads. So just thread, put the thread onto your needle. We're going to come right up through the bottom of our bunny ball and out the first eye socket. Just boom, right outside that little eye socket. Run the thread all the way through and leave yourself a, you know, a nice little tail of thread. At least a few inches. But we're going to use this thread here in a minute to do a little decorating. So mine is actually really long. So I've come just up through the bottom and out one of the eye sockets. Are you okay? All right. Now we thread on one of the beads. This is always fun, Marie, trying to thread a bead on <laughs> camera. So for some reason, I get to be all thumbs. Jane asks, could you just glue the glass beads on? You know, for me, the glass beads really show. And one of the things I want to point out is, you see how we made these nice uh, indentations? Your bunny's going to look, or your critter, or whatever you make, is going to look a little more correct if the eye is sitting in the face a little bit instead of on top of the face. So you could glue them in, but I think it's going to have a nicer effect if you sew them in. It really will. And you could have, if you have really thin thread, then you can double it, which I probably should have done with this one. So now I've rethread my needle, and my bead is kind of swing, is right out there loose. So we're going to just go right back in and out the bottom again. You might want to try and go through the other eye socket, but you're going to anchor it better if you pull it back through the bottom. Now, what we're going to do is just pull this really nice and tight, and you can adjust it so that the hole of the bead is not sitting right up front. And just do that with your needle or whatever you have, and pull these threads underneath really tight and tie a nice firm knot. So, see how it's kind of sitting right inside the, the face there? It gives it just a real cute look as opposed to sitting on top of the face. So make an eye socket and then tie them in really firm. And let me tie this and so I have so much thread here. Um, tie a nice firm knot and then do the second eye. Now if you're using a heavier gauge thread, you can tie enough that it uh, tie it tight enough that it leaves uh, an indent in the bottom of your bunny and then we can just fill that in because we're going to cover all this up anyway. So now we have a nice cute little knot a bunny eye and then we're going to put the second eye in the very same way. So first thread your needle and then thread your bead. Can find my needle. <laughs> and did you bring whiskers? I did. Fun. Okay, that's fun. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you asked that because I meant to remember that for Storybook Bunny and I, I think I had already forgotten. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We're coming up through the eye socket again. Come all the way out with your thread. Just make sure you pull it all the way through. And then thread your bead on. And thread your needle again. and go back into that eye socket. And when you come out the bottom, you just want to leave a little bit of a space from where you went in last time so that you have a little space to tie, uh, to tie that knot. You just have like a little bit. So he's going to have kind of a baby little face. So we'll tie a knot. What's our time, Anne? We are at 2.50. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do this and then I'll show you how we, let's just make his little nose and his little mouth. I make them, you could make the mouth with wool if you want, um, but let's give this guy, we're just going to match dot here for the moment. And bunny noses, I don't know, they could be different. Your friend Marie here just kind of makes up whatever she wants at the time. <laughs> True that. Okay, I'm going to pull off a little tuft of wool for his nose, and I'm just sticking with the same pink color. 
And in this case, I'm just going to stick it right on the face where I think I want it. If you don't have enough, you can always come back and add more, uh, either you know before or after you needle felt it. So I'm just going to put on a tiny little patch. It looks like he'd look cute with rosy cheeks even, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Uh, he does. Like a black, a brown nose and uh, rosy cheeks. Should you have a black nose? No, bunnies have a pink nose. Okay, so here we go. See how it's just on his face? I'm just going to make a line. I'm just going horizontal across right there. Tack, tack, tack. Pick a point down below. Needle felt that point. And then meet, ta attach your corners. So I am needle felting a little upside down triangle in this blob of wool. And once I outline that triangle, then I'm going to fold the fiber down into the middle and fold it over and fold it in. That's why you put such a little tiny blob is so that, now I'm working upside down, so hopefully it looks semi <laughs> straight. <laughs> Not that it should matter. A triangle's a triangle, no matter which way you turn it, but I'll use that as my excuse. <laughs> okay, so he has a little semi triangle nose, and I'll go after, now notice I'm just barely tacking it down so I don't indent his face too much. Are we doing okay there, Anne? All right, but I've still got all this thread underneath. So if you want, and you can use double the thickness so it has a little more impact. Okay, I just cut some of this off so I can. <laughs> uh, so that it has double the impact. If you want, you can use that to outline his little nose. You could even give him little eyebrows if you want. So let me get this on my needle. And there we go. Now I'm double threading it this time. Move dot. He wants to be in like every shot. Okay, so now I'm going to come up through the bottom and how did I do his? Oh, I just did a straight little line down. So just come right back up from where you are. You can come out the base of the nose. What did he have? Oh, he has a little just a, I think this guy, he'll just have like a little line down. Um, if you want to come, you could come straight down and out the bottom or you could come, if you have a shorter needle than mine, you could come up and make the little sides. But I'm going to go back down through the bottom because my needle's so long. If you have a shorter needle, you can, you know, do the T. Aww. Maybe we'll just leave him just like that. Yeah, Anne's, Anne's giving me, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to leave him just like that. And then you can tie this in a knot. And you can go up through it again, too, if you want it to be a little bit stronger. And just the fun thing is about this is your thread you can play with it a little bit, and if you don't like it, you can just undo it. You know, you could always re-knot it from the bottom if you want. Um, but you can undo it at any time just by pulling it out before you go too far. What do y'all think? They, they love him. Do they? He's cute. <laughs> He's kind of innocent. Now, you could do his eyebrows, too, uh, which I love doing. I don't know why. I guess because I have like a little worried baby dog, so <laughs> the worried eyebrows always kind of get me. So I'm just going to go right into this little eyebrow, and then I'm going to come straight over and out the other one, just come like straight across like that, and then you can just um, come right down and out the bottom. And so he has kind of a, you can play with it, you know, make it just like you want. He looks semi-worried. I'd probably play with it. So let's give him some whiskers since y'all asked. Now you're going to want to knot this off. So let me do it even if I decide to change him later, just so you can see exactly how it's done. So tie it off and try not to tie it so tight that you ruin the eyebrows that you just made or whatever features you just made. You just want to tie off the thread. My monster scissors. <laughs> And wherever you have a little indent or something, especially if you have our MC1 batting, you can just make a little patch and tear and stack, tear and stack so that you fill the hole. And this stuff will patch so easily that you won't even see it. I'm going to put a little bit more in there to fill that hole. But you can patch stuff in and leave no line by letting all these loose edges just splay out and then just tack it in the middle and then tack down all the edges like that. So patching in with this fiber is so easy. No one will even know where you did what because you can hide everything. 
Okay, so there's that. Now let's give our little guy some whiskers. Do you have a preference for color? Oh, um, let's go with a little bit of brown so maybe it shows up. Is it, whichever you, you can pull from any so we we sell horse hair is horse hair is what we like to use for whiskers Anne's gonna you can't see this but um this is how we sell horse hair and it comes in three different color families so this one right here is called dark this one we just call sorel and this one is light so you can see that they all are a little bit mixed and we like to use this for whiskers Horse hair makes great whiskers. So you can even get color variety in what you have. So I have here a long piece of horse hair and you might not be able to see it. So I'm gonna try and hold it over the wood here. See if that shows. I have a very long piece of horse hair. And this is just how I like to do it. And I know some of our friends probably have a different way and they might chime in uh, with their own advice. And this is just something I kind of figured out. So if someone has a, um, a refinement to this that'll be great because I don't like to use any glue so I just threaded it onto my needle just like you would sewing thread and you know what you could use fishing line if you want or whatever so I'm gonna go in one side can they just they have to come out the corner of his nose or just out of his face I don't know where bunny whiskers are <laughs> so here's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all the way through uh, and leave one side trailing out and just pull, hold on to the one and pull the other length through. So you can leave it long and then cut them if you want after. So now it's going all the way through his face, but what I'm gonna do is come back through. So we will anchor the whiskers on each side. I'll show you what I mean. Just kind of like we did the bottom. So holding that one firm, I'm gonna go right in here and come back out. and you can leave them just like that or you can tie them in a little knot. I usually just leave them like that because I don't have any kids playing with them or anything, you know. Here it's mostly just adults playing with them. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I broke it. I sure did. Okay, here we go again. I didn't tie, I wasn't able to tie it in a knot. Okay, I usually don't tie a knot. I just thought I'd give it a go. I usually just go in through the one side We'll just edit that out right now. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> and out through this side. And now you have a pair that's anchored. But what you can do is actually just go back in and then come out this side. And now it's anchored. There you go. So now it's anchored on both sides. And then you can just do that again. You can curl them a little bit. So let's repeat. A couple of our felting friends want to know why, you, why horse hair? Horse hair is nice and coarse and it's going to stand up like regular thread would you know be cute too but it won't stand up super well so you could also try a fishing line which is kind of you know clear usually but horse hair just has some nice coarseness to it and will kind of stand up off the face of your bunny. So I'm going to keep working on these a little bit if someone ask another question and we'll see see if we can help. I'm going to work on these and make a couple more whiskers. Are we out of time or do we have time to make a couple more whiskers? We have time for for a couple more whiskers. Okay. Um, let's see here. Anne's going to give us your questions while we make a few more whiskers. Sharon um, asked it, what I think is an interesting question. So she said, on average, um, how long, like if you weren't trying to speed it up for a demonstration, how long would it take you to get to uh, a firmness that you really like? I tell you, honestly, I could spend... Um, a couple of episodes of my favorite <laughs> Netflix binge watching, you know, just to make sometimes a basic shape. I, I don't rush and it depends on, it does depend on the size, you know, the size of the thing you're making. Um, but it, it just depends on the size, really. It's going to depend on the size. So it's hard for me to answer because I am a slow felter. Honestly, I take my time with things and just kind of enjoy the process along the way. Um, so hopefully y'all saw that I went, you know, came in one side, I left my trail, I came out the other side, and um, now I have three whiskers on this one side. And I know he's not really standing up for us, but he's almost looking like a kitty. I need to work on, I need to shape his ears a little bit. So I'm going to come through again and make two whiskers on this side, and then we're going to be done with him except for refining so spend the time 
to go over the whole thing, smooth it out, firm it up, shape it just like you want. There's no reason for it not to look just like you want, you know, because it should be fun to make in the first place. However you want it to look, that's how it should look. I know this is probably hard to see on the camera, but here we go. Okay, so I think I have three coming out each side now, and all I've done is run, you know, all the way through each time, and you could even run through three times if you want to super anchor it. And look, if they get pulled out, horse hair lasts a long time, you can always add more. <laughs> you can, you can always add more. All right, so here's my little guy. I'll see if I can get him on kind of a, a lighter colored background so you can see him. And I can't see him all that well, so I'll have to play with his whiskers. And I'm going to see if I can see what you all are saying. Let me move this away. Um, and we'll pause here. Oops. Okay. Okay, so here's our two bunny balls. Here is uh, dot and, and re-dot, dot two. This is the one we made today. You can see his whiskers maybe a little bit better. And all we did was run through each side. So these ones are stapled through, or you can start through and back again. Start through and back again. Start, start through and back again. Either way, it's going to work well. Some people like to put a, a dot of glue on them. I use as little glue as possible. I don't know why. That's just what I do. So I hope that you have fun making Dot with us, and I hope that you'll post him on our Facebook group so we can see yours too, whatever colors you use. And if you use MC1 batting, remember to tag us, uh, tag, you know, hashtag Living Felt and hashtag MC1 Wool so that we can find you, whether you're on Instagram or Facebook. Alrighty, and a couple of our felting friends want a, want a good close up look, so I'm going to zoom in okay. for a second here. Zoom in on that. So we'll just hold them up. <laughs> <laughs> it's <Right>? fun! <laughs> to give away prizes which is something that we always do is give away prizes so for everyone who's joined us for the live show and you've been commenting asking questions chiming into the conversation your name goes into a hat come on in and Anne has been writing your name down so we're going to give away some prizes today Sharon Arthur Berger. Yay, Yay, Sharon! Tell her about the prizes, Anne. Alrighty, so the prizes today are a storybook bunny kit. <laughs> Prize number one. This is the thing we're making next week. So mm -hmm. A needle felting a monarch kit. So it's a lovely 2D picture. Or an eight ounce bundle of our cornwool roving. <laughs> Those are some fun prizes. Oh, <laughs> cool. Yeah. Okay, so you go are going to keep go. grabbing names. Next, we've got Claire Long. Yay, Yay Claire! <laughs> <laughs> okay, and one then more. Holly. Your turn again, Anne. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Take it. Kim Turner Van Sant. Yay! Yay, Kim! Everybody, thank you so much for felting with us today. We hope you had fun. We hope that you'll make yourself a little dot or a bunny ball, and we're going to post some links uh, in the, it'll show up in the upper description to Cheap and Dot on the blog so that you can download those PDFs and follow along too. So I hope you have a great week. Thanks for being flexible with us since we didn't do Storybook Bunny. But next week, Storybook Bunny, I Yay. promise. Okay, see you then. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye. That is all for this time, friends. I hope you had fun. I hope that you will make yourself a cute little bunny ball. Ours is in a different color. We look forward to seeing yours on our group. It's fb.com slash groups slash living felt friends. We hope you'll join us there and share everything you want to make. Ask your questions, ask for tips and advice. It's a really nice group. And all the supplies used today, there's a link right down below. Just look for living felt or felting supplies.livingfelt.com. We'll see you there. Have a great day.